Welcome to the Coming Home Well podcast, the show that educates, supports, and advocates for the veteran community. Your host, Dr. Tyler Piron, U.S. Army retired, will bring you exciting conversations with amazing guests about resources, research, and military history, all geared to helping our warriors to come home well. Here's your host, Dr. Tyler Piron. Welcome back to Coming Home. Well, we're going to talk today about something that is really important. Obviously, transitioning out of the military is one of the most significant challenges that veterans face in coming home well. So in order to do that, the VA has a number of programs, but one of the most important is like, how do you get out of the military and into the VA? So it's a little bit of a challenge. We have Dr. Amika Riggins is the program manager for the post 9-11 military to VA program. That's a big mouthful, but we're going to go and talk all about it. And she's at the Hampton, Virginia area, the Hampton VA. She's been with the federal government for over nine years and has worked in several areas, including healthcare for homeless, primary care integration, suicide prevention, emergency room, and the inpatient psych unit. She's a licensed clinical social worker, licensed clinical addiction specialist associate, and a licensed practical nurse. She's done it all. She's been all over. uh, So she has a lot of experience to talk with us about. She's also a certified integrated health coach. So that's not entirely all the things she does. We're going to talk about the post 9-11 military to VA program, which is a really neat program. But rather than me tell you, welcome to the show. Thank you. So So let's let's talk a little bit about you real quick. I talked a lot about the things. How in the world did you get started with the VA? Well, I got my social work degree, bachelor's and then master's, and everybody was talking about getting employed at the VA and how actually the VA does employ more social workers than any other agency. Wow. Um, So, yes. I didn't know that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's a true statement. So definitely just getting on at the VA was a goal, a career goal of mine. And as Mm -hmm. you heard, I practice in several different areas, got my licensure. And so here I am. So is this, is You've always worked for the VA since you became a social worker? I did some community inpatient work and some nursing home work in the past, but majority of my clinical work for the VA. So you've had a lot of experience with a lot of different veterans, probably from the entire, all the different eras, different regions. And now you're doing the post 9-11 military to VA program. So what is that? It is definitely an honor to be the program manager of the post 9-11 military to VA program program. We serve veterans who are transitioning out of active duty as active Mm -hmm. duty service members, and they are en route to becoming veterans. In particular, those veterans who served in the military since November the 11th, 1998 to present. That's very important. Why 1998? Um, That's very important. Yesterday was the Memorial Day for Mm 9-11. So those veterans that most likely were serving during 9-11, 2001, were enlisted November 11, 1998 to present. So that's the unique population of veterans that our program does serve. So if you serve that, so as they're transitioning, now is this education, is it healthcare? What, What is this program? So what it looks like is when a service member knows that they are transitioning out of the military, whether by choice or by force, (laughs) <laughs> depending on what circumstances they may have, mm-hmm. you can get connected to our program several different ways. If a veteran is in, for example, a military treatment facility, whether they are experiencing complex mental health needs, medical needs, for example, cancer, terminal cancer, any diabetes, any type of medical condition that may be causing challenge, and the service member is not able to serve anymore as an active duty service member, then they will begin the transition process. The VA does have what we call VA liaisons. I'm honored to have my own VA liaison attached to Hampton VA, who actually sits at Fort Eustis here in Virginia. And so the VA liaisons, whether they're local or wherever the service member is stationed, would then complete paperwork and alert us that a service member is on their way to the Hampton catchment area. We call it catchment area because that means the area that Hampton VA serves. That could be Elizabeth City. That could be Chesapeake. 
wherever one of our seat box are located. So if they're coming this way and they're going to be attached to a VA, wherever that is all over the world, then that service member would be linked if they're post 9-11 to the post 9-11 program. So is this a voluntary program or is it something, how does it get done? Obviously it, they're, they're getting out of the service and they're like, nah, nah, I don't want, I don't want nothing to do with that. It is a voluntary program, but as I mentioned, those veterans that are in military treatment facilities usually are working with a social worker or a nurse who would mention our staff and our team that would help them have what we call a smooth transition into the VA so that they can have access to primary care services, mental health services, or any specialty services that they may need. That's just one way to get in. Um, of course, you can walk in. Um, we have our own building at the Hampton VA, Building 14, where we do have two twin towers. The twin towers are outside, so it it um, sets us apart on the campus. Mm -hmm. um, right beside the women's clinic, that building was dedicated for this program for the post-9-11 veterans, as well as you can meet with your primary care provider or any team member, and they will refer you to, post, to the post-9-11 program. So the this is prim primarily a healthcare and, and integrative, all the different services, but it's on the healthcare side. Well, the post 9-11 program, the unique thing about it is it offers case management services, mm -hmm. which we see several veterans of all different eras sometimes find themselves in need of case management services. But the post 9-11 program does offer those case management services for veterans who are of the post 9-11 era. That case management looks, it can look different. Usually, once we are alerted that a service member is coming, we will begin the initial phase of case management. We will call, greet the service member. At that time, they may or may not be a veteran. So greet the service member slash veteran. Welcome them to Hampton VA and thank them for choosing Hampton VA. We realize that veterans can choose health, you know, to get their health care anywhere that they would like. But we are very proud of the work that we're doing at Hampton VA and we thank them for choosing us. Um, yeah. So there, it sounds like it's a way, when you talk about case management, that doesn't mean a whole lot to me as, as a lay person. It probably means a lot to you. It probably means a lot to the social workers. And I have a rough idea, but for the audience, what does case management mean? So we know that the veterans that we come in contact with, sometimes they have challenges. The reality is if you call the main line and express what your needs are, you may have some challenges expressing it. And as you said, you may not know medical lingo. So that's where we come in. We talk with the veteran to see exactly what their care needs are. We ask them pretty much a uh, set of questions if they're having challenges or have any concerns with managing their health care. If they have any concerns about transportation for their health care, do they have social relationships? Any barriers that may come up that we know are unique needs to the transition and service member. Uh, you know, there's a big difference for, from being active duty and having a daily routine. And then all of a sudden you find yourself out of the military. And a lot of them are saying, OK, what's next? What do I do from here? So we jump in. Do you need education assistance? And we link them to the resources that will help them further their goals, whether that's if they need to file a claim and they want to be connected to health benefits, mm -hmm. um, whether they want education and they don't have an idea about how to get their GI Bill started. We give them those resources, whether they want to, we, you know, unique needs. We, I want to add my child. I'm having a baby. Where do I get that done? So we serve as a hub of information to help the service member not really have to figure it out on their own, Not so the veteran is not frustrated. We provide a great amount of advocacy and linkage to services that they need. When you get out of the military, a lot of times you might get 90-day supply of medication. Okay, where are you going to get the refills from? So that's right. where we come in. You don't have to figure it out on your own. We have direct connection and correlation with the care providers that are at Hampton VA. See, that's the most important part, I think. And that that is really the magic of this program is, you know, like, hey, you're part of the system. And it's just like in the military. Yeah. If you know somebody and you know how the system works and you, you've got somebody that can advocate for you that knows who to call and, and how to get something done, as opposed to trying to learn, learn it from the outside in, that's really tough. So you're like a guide, a, someone, a chaperone almost into the VA program. 
most definitely it decreases the stress that the service member veteran has to experience. It decreases barriers because like you said, I do have emails. I have numbers. I, I can reach out and, and I know somebody who knows somebody. So whatever door we're trying to you know get through, we're able to get through. And the VA does support our post 9-11 veterans as they transition in, you know, like you said, coming home well. So we want to welcome that post 9-11 era of veterans, those service members, and really let them know that we're here for them. And not only as they transition in, but we're being that we're the post 9-11 program, we're always accessible and available to assist them with their journey in the VA system. So it's pretty much a one-stop shop as you're transitioning, go into this program, and you get referred before you even get out. So that's really good because a lot of times you're like, oh, if only I had known about mm-hmm. XYZ program, that would have been awesome a year ago, five years ago, whenever whenever you get out. And before they didn't have it. How long has this program been going? This program started in 2009. Mm-hmm. 2009. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's well established. They've got them all over the place. And it's not just at the Hampton VA. It's all mm-hmm. at all the VA centers across the country. So if you're getting out, what is the time frame that if you get out, and you you alluded to it earlier, if you're an active duty person, it, clearly that goes. But if what if it's been five years, 10 years? How does that work? You ask a great question. I really wanted to respond. So one of the great things about our program and just our monitoring system is we have we have a system that alerts us of any post 9-11 veteran that touches this VA system anywhere. Mm-hmm. Um, so say you've been out for, at this point, say you've been out for 15 years and you just decided to go to the emergency room tonight. Tomorrow morning, my team will be alerted that a post 9-11 veteran has accessed the VA system. From that, you will receive a call, three calls and a letter, <laughs> letting you know that the Hampton VA has a post 9-11 team that wants to answer any questions that you may have. We want to make sure that you're connected to care at your discretion. So when we do speak with the service member or the veteran, it really looks like, hi, you know, do you, would you like a primary care provider? Mm -hmm. You know, who's managing your healthcare needs? Who, you know, do you have any mental health needs? We provide screenings for every veteran that touches the system to include suicide prevention. We assess them for alcohol, substance abuse, for homelessness, food insecurity. We screen them for TBI, traumatic brain injury, military sexual trauma. So we really, PTSD, depression, we really are aware of the challenges that service members slash veterans have experienced. And we screen every veteran that we come in contact with just to see how well they're doing. And if there's anything, maybe you don't think you need anything, but once we screen you, we get an idea of where you are and, you know, Do you have the support system that you need? We find that because of the military community, there are a lot of people that veterans that are out that might not have a spouse or a family local. Mm -hmm. So there's that case manager that can check in on you. One story that I think is really great to share. We had a service member who found themselves at risk for homelessness recently. They called us and said, hey, I'm going to be homeless Friday. What can you do to help me? We, we like to say that we have a lot of connections in the community. We have people that we will say will stop, drop, and roll for a combat veteran, for a veteran, for a service member. We were able to reach out. My transition patient advocate was able to reach out to some of our support systems and speak with them about the veteran being at risk for homelessness. And he was losing his home on Friday at 5 p.m. They put some resources together. DAV just cost a couple of connections. And he went homeless at 5 p.m. on Friday, that particular Friday at 6 p.m. They were picking him up. They had located him a home and they were, you know, taking him to his new place with some assistance. So some unique cases we can help with if we don't, if we're not able to help, you know, maybe just providing that support, you know, helping the veteran as they're navigating through the challenges and waiting on services to begin. So that's that's where we come in. You know, I've had a lot of discussions with various VA programs, and it's always so impressive how these things get started. Somebody recognizes a need, and they develop a program like the people that are at risk for homelessness or justice-involved veterans. A Mm -hmm. lot of times, those folks fall through the cracks, and a lot of obviously they're involved with the law, and 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 that's a big challenge. 
But if they don't deal with the VA in the right way, they get overpaid and then they don't get that money. And, and there's all mm -hmm. sorts of things that if you have someone advocating for you, like a social worker to help you sort of guide through the process, things go a lot smoother. And it, it, it could be, I mean, I remember I was medically retired and I went from being in the army since I was 17 years old until I got out and I was in my mid thirties and all of a sudden I didn't know what to do. Like, how do I find a job? How do I uh, get a house? How do I do all these things? And fortunately it all worked out really well and, and it turned out to be the best thing for me. But I remember that, that fear and that concern, and I didn't have this program. I didn't have somebody to turn to and say, Hey, how do I get healthcare? How do I do this? Because as I was telling you earlier, I'm a big fan of the VA. Obviously, the people have challenges. And a lot of times it's because people don't understand how the programs work. And they don't have an advocate out there pushing saying, hey, you should go do this. You need this care. Your military sexual trauma cannot just be left unaddressed. Go and take care of it. And so it's a great program. And so I want to ask you, what are some of the biggest challenges that you see both in current veterans last two or three years and veterans overall as they access this program? What are they trying to get? What do they need to be successful? We are definitely recognizing that the veterans are getting younger by the day. Mm -hmm. um, we're seeing them as young as 19, a lot of 20s. We were kind of looking at that earlier today. And so just really at times not wanting to connect to the medical center, maybe feeling like they don't, you know, they're healthy or they don't really need anything at this time. And so it's all full want... of old people. <laughs> yes. Yes. And um, not reading a lot of the VA paperwork that comes to their, to their home. So, well, you know, how many times have we had someone that said, I didn't even know I was eligible for VA healthcare. Mm -hmm. And that really takes me by surprise. I'm like, you know, or just not thinking they were eligible, thinking it was the VA is for a certain type of person. The biggest challenge is really just getting the word out for the VA welcomes all veterans. And I've, I've even heard the director say, you know, we're looking at the people that are in this area that are veterans that are not accessing our VA system. We want them to access the VA system. We want people to choose to choose VA. You mentioned that there may be some negative, but I tell you, in my nine years plus of, of federal service with the VA, I'm, I'm a proud employee of the VA. I see the great work that my colleagues do. And I actually have a team of, my personal team is combined of both nurses and social workers. So I get the best of both worlds and get to work with the mental health department at, at Hampton VA and just how we collaborate and really share resources within the VA system. Um, I think that the VA is growing and we're trying to make sure that the staff that is there knows about the programs that the VA offers, which I think is something that we could all continue to, you know, work forward on. But my program in particular, we want to know about everything because I mean, I'm learning something. I'm still learning. I'm learning something every, every day. And I, and I made that statement. I learned something today and I really feel great about it. We were, we do case, we, we do case studies or we review cases. Mm -hmm. We have a treatment team where we bring in other disciplines, psychiatrists, medical provider, peer support, psych psychologists. And we really review the cases from an interdisciplinary format to see if there's something that maybe one of us is missing that the other one could recommend. My nurse said to me this week, what about this tele telehealth program that mm -hmm. really the veteran can be contacted every day? They can do a telehealth prompter that says, you know, did you have your medicine today? Yes. Are you feeling okay today? Yes. Do you have any needs? If the veteran said they had a need, then they would receive a call that same day from some staff at the VA. I was like, I wasn't aware of this program. So, you know. And it's really a great program. It is. <laughs> working together to share the resources that I think is like one of the biggest deficits, like you said, the not knowing. So really the more that we can educate my team, we actually do a lot of community outreach at we're on base, you know, mm -hmm. with active duty, letting them know as you want, you know, you're coming out of the military, you know, tell somebody, tell somebody in the community that we're here, you know, and I will tell you, even if you're not a post nine 11 era veteran, if you're 95, we have a veteran that's 95. He calls us. We still help him. 
We don't turn anybody away. The case management is for the post 9-11 veterans. It is a short-term case management program. But again, like I said, if you ever need support, contact us. But you know, that's the great thing about the VA social work services and, and more broadly, the sort of case management, even though the 9-11, post 9-11 military to VA program is very specific for transitioning folks. But the VA has a very broad ability to help veterans, no matter what the challenge is. But, you know, I'm a personally a fan of the VA simply because I, I live in Charlottesville and we've had uh, CBOC here. I've had the same primary care doctor since 2009. Wow. Like the same guy. And he's awesome. But nowhere do you have the same doctor for years and years. Like I also have uh, UVA Healthcare, which is the, my local teaching hospital at the University of Virginia. Mm -hmm. And every year I have a new primary care doctor. And so mm -hmm. they're like, oh, you haven't seen so-and-so since, you know, they've, and I'm like, yeah, because y'all change them like every six months to a year, which it happens. It's a teaching hospital. But having the same doctor who knows me, knows my issues, knows sort of that that ebb and flow, it really helps. But you also mentioned mm -hmm. something really cool about telehealth. And if folks that have listened to the show, we've talked a lot about telehealth. We had the guy who started it and the entire VA mm -hmm. and how it how it all began. So go back if you're really curious. But it's it's a really neat story. But if you need a specialty care, like a neurologist or something else, I was able to get an appointment at a rich at, at, with a telehealth appointment in two weeks when the University of Virginia couldn't see me for months wow. because they could take a doctor from somewhere else and just make an appointment because it doesn't have to be physically you know, present. Mm -hmm. And that's just amazing. I mean, there's the focus on healthcare and the focus on getting the services to the veteran as quickly as possible is, is really one of the most key takeaways. So mm -hmm. I do want to ask you a couple more questions about the 9-11 military to VA program. We talked about who's eligible. Not Nobody gets turned away, but it's primarily for the folks since 1998 to present. That's an interesting. I've never heard that date before, but that's pretty cool. And how many people at the either at the Hampton VA or across the VA have participated in this program? Is it pretty widespread? Is it most veterans? Is it some? How does that work? So we, we're we currently case managing about 275 veterans. This is actually the largest number that we have had in case management ever in at the Hampton VA. With the, I was telling you about how we get notified of any post 9-11 veterans. That is actually increasing monthly where and we make those calls and Hampton is proud to say that we've done that at 100% for several years and so not all VAs are doing that but Hampton is is doing that and doing that well so we're very proud of that we again at least provide three calls and a letter to any post 911 veteran that touches our system anywhere just mm -hmm. to say hey if you need us we're out here and so we're taking care of quite a bit of veterans we received 56 veterans from military treatment facilities just last month, oh, wow. which is again, the largest number that we've received. So we see that it's increasing. Our referrals are increasing uh, rapidly. Um, as people become aware of it? As people become aware of it, that could be the reason. <laughs> We're out and about. Mm -hmm. We partnered with, uh, you had Megan Flaherty with the suicide community yep. project. So we, we again, we're in the community. We're spreading the word about the post 9-11 program continuously, re-educating about what we do and really just doing, I think doing great work and having a great reputation allows people to say, hey, you know, I know someone that can help. And so really by word of mouth, we get a lot of referrals, even from in-house. We just spending the time going out, like I was saying, Letting other VA staff know about this program. I'm a part of new employee orientation to make sure that they know if you have a post 9-11 veteran, these are the things that we can do. We've received a lot of referrals, you know, recently for people who just need assistance with readjustment, mm -hmm. maybe some readjustment counseling. We provide those type of services. Um, That's pretty awesome. I mean, I, I wish some of these programs had started even earlier, but 2009 <laughs> to present, that's pretty amazing. Because that is the mm -hmm. most critical time when people get out of the military. That first, you know, two to three years is where people have the hardest time and they're at most at risk 
especially if they have additional stressors like PTS or military sexual trauma or other things, or if they had challenges in the military like adjustment disorders and other mental health issues, or if they have physical issues and get medically retired and all of a sudden their entire world disappears and they're like, I don't know how to make an appointment. I don't know who to call. How do I get a referral? How do I do X, Y, and Z? Most definitely. And then, you know, that's where we come in. We really get them connected. I was going to say, we also have employment leads, Mm -hmm. you know, when they're getting out, we have staff that will assist them with, let me look at your resume. You know, let me speak to so-and-so, you know, maybe even referring them to direct hiring positions at the VA. Mm -hmm. Um, There's programs that are out there that welcome service members, depending on what they were doing, into positions at the VA. There are initiatives that focus on hiring our veterans. And so we get them connected to those resources, that things that they may not have heard of. We get job leads every day Hmm. that are specific to veterans. We can send them out. We are, you know, we have some, we have employment programs at the VA that are willing to hire veterans right on the spot, pretty much. So these are things that we have connections to. The federal government hiring someone on the spot. That's like amazing. (laughs) Uh, You normally it's like a six to 12 month process. You know, yeah, I'm totally familiar with how the challenge goes. So the fact that they're that agile is, Mm -hmm. is quite amazing sometimes. We've had a couple of employment employee fairs and a positive story. My transition patient advocate, she was saying she had accidentally forgot to take her badge off and she went to her medical appointment Mm -hmm. and the staff there was like, oh, you work at the VA. I want to get on there. And it was a veteran. And she told her about the employment employee fair that's upcoming Saturday. Looked over her resume. She took her resume, got in line. She was hired on the spot. See, that's just amazing. mm Mm-hmm. So is there any reason someone would not want to participate in this program? The veterans actually do have a choice. When we do the screening, we see if there are any challenges that we can support them with. Not all veterans need that extra support in navigating the system. Majority, I will honestly say, are getting them connected to a primary care provider and a mental health provider if needed and Mm -hmm. any other specialty services. And then they're pretty much on their way. And if they need anything, they can always come back. But we do have those veterans that require some complex case management, depending on their particular situation. Again, whether that's medical, we do sometimes it could be terminal cancer. They may need Mm -hmm. that extra support just to make sure that they are getting their appointments and that there's no barrier. You mentioned OCC, Office of Community Care. Mm -hmm. So when veterans are being seen in the community, then that it's always good to have a case manager that's within the VA system. Oh, yes. Because we can help link (laughs) a lot of that stuff together for them where they might have to call a number and hold on. Again, it's a matter of me sending an email or my team sending an email, getting an answer, getting an extra set of eyes on it. And I honestly can say that when we reach out to our care providers, to the team members who are taking care of them, Mm -hmm. they respond. And we have that open communication. I met with a veteran for the first time off that report that I was saying two days ago. He said, I was promised I would be referred for an x-ray. I reviewed his chart. I didn't see the order for the x-ray. Matter of me sending a team's message to that provider. I went back and looked for it this morning. It wasn't there. I politely wrote the primary care provider again, and we had a great dialogue, and I looked again, and there it was. I thanked him so much for just his assistance. He thanked me, so we were kind of thanking each other, but the main thing is that the veteran gets what he needs, and he is a veteran that told me, I'm going to be leaving. I'm only in Hampton for a couple of months. I'm planning on moving to another location, so what can I do for him? Mm -hmm. I've already reached out to the VA that he is transitioning to to the post 9-11 program manager and team to say, hey, we have a post 9-11 veteran that is coming your way. He wants to be connected to care. And therefore she wrote me back and said, thank you for this referral. We will get this veteran connected to primary care and mental health. It's smooth. Isn't that easy? I mean, having that in with the program and, and having somebody that can help navigate some of these challenges is really beneficial. And, and I can't foot stomp that enough, especially as you're getting out and, and you're like in a whole new world. For me, I had never, other than as a kid, I had never dealt with, you know, all these other doctors and all these mm. 
things that I, and the army sort of just took care of it and, you know, like be here at a certain time and mm-hmm. all these, it just sort of worked. And all of a sudden it's up to me to figure it out. And mm-hmm. so having somebody to sort of smooth those waters and ask, be able to ask questions and get answers is, is really important. So we, we've talked about who's eligible. We've talked about how long it's been going. And we talked about some of the challenges that veterans might face as they're getting out of the service and how this program really helps. Is there anything I should have asked but didn't? We we do offer groups. You know, we have we, we provide. And by groups, what do you mean? We have a group for, we have a combat group that we hold every Thursday in our mm-hmm. building 14. Is um, that like a therapy group or a discussion group? What is that? It is a therapy slash support group. Specifically, that one is for combat veterans. And I, you mentioned that I was an integrative health coach. We will be have, having an integrative health coaching group. I was doing it on the inpatient unit for quite some time, but definitely something that I want to implement with the post 9-11 program, which is where we look at whole health. So really just a place for our veterans to come and really dialogue and and really kind of talk about the things that are, you know, that they're carrying on their heart and really be able to share with other people who may experience things that are similar to them. Just connecting with our program, it does take the stress off of like, where am I going to go for primary care? Where am I Mm going to go for mental health? Whenever you get out of the military, it's like, okay, I need to get my medications. So really working with our program helps connect the veteran. We can tell them, you know, you can walk into the My Healthy, the Mental Health Connect Clinic is where they would go. Or, okay, maybe this is something that needs to be handled by the emergency room. Um, We are offering more video appointments. You mentioned that capability for primary care which I think is efficient. We're spread out on some people live in rural areas. So there is really uh, no barrier to you getting the services that you need. We, for during the pandemic time, we provided, uh, the homeless program actually provided smartphones for veterans who were at risk for um, homelessness or experiencing homelessness to decrease barriers from them getting their care. But the VA does offer um, video options. We have iPads. For those who don't have a smart device uh, so that they can keep their appointment. That is awesome. So there's really no barrier, no limit to someone getting the services that they need, whether that's primary care or whether that's mental health services, which we know are very important a lot of times for our veterans. So video, I mean, you can get an iPad which is a loner. It's a loner iPad that the VA gives you. Then make your appointment and don't have to worry about it. And, you know, getting in and out to the VA sometimes can be a challenge. And I love telehealth. Mm -hmm. I mean, obviously sometimes you need to be in person. They need to examine you, but a lot of times you don't need that. They just need to check and make sure and talk with you. And so that is a great option. So Mm -hmm. we we've talked a lot about all these different things. And I, I have one sort of like last, request. Is there any case, not mentioning any names, where the program has made a really significant difference? Like some some case study where it really stands out in your mind where the post 9-11 military to VA program like was like the thing. I've shared a couple of them already that I think are like really instrumental, that we've been really instrumental in making a difference. We get a lot of positive feedback and kudos to our team. I think that one of the things that I impress upon the team is we're going to treat every veteran, no matter how long they've served, you know, no matter what branch they served in, we're going to welcome them as a veteran with respect and dignity. Any challenges that may present, whether it is that they may not at that time be eligible for care for one reason or another. Maybe they haven't served the 24 months. We've had a couple of issues with that. We commit you them were to commit. reading my mind as, as you were t- <laughs> that is exactly what I was going to ask you about. Cause we've talked on the show about upgrades and how the VA determines mm-hmm. eligibility, which is necessarily different than your mm-hmm. discharge. And, and there's, eligible for VA and, and, you know, eligibility determinations. Mm -hmm. Uh, So, so is that something that the program helps with as well? We do. If they get a not so favorable discharge, we give them the information and the document on how they can request a, an appeal on that. We've Mm -hmm. had successes with that, depending on what was going on. You never know 
um, the challenges that somebody may be experiencing, as well as we give them referrals on where to go and file their claims. We start them out from the very beginning. How do you get registered as a veteran? That's mm -hmm. step one. We start giving them that information and then they're not even in our system. We'll say, OK, we're going to call you back. What day is good? They tell us what day it is. We follow up. If they don't get registered, we will even sit on the phone with them for registration just to get them enrolled, at least to get a chart in the VA system. From there, then we start moving forward. We really work with walk healthcare them through. eligibility. Huh? And you walk them through it. We do. Healthcare and eligibility. We're on the phone with them a lot, making sure that that veteran is getting enrolled and that, again, they're in the right category. If they're a combat veteran, they get combat veteran status. They can now get free care for 10 years. So that's really awesome. So let's, let me ask a quick question about that, because what makes someone a combat veteran? If they had time in combat, if they did time in combat, and really their DD-214 will speak to that. So healthcare eligibility will review it. And if they had com actually combat time, then they would mm -hmm. be a combat veteran. And you get free care, no matter if you make a million dollars, you get free care for 10 years. And see that... That's, I think that was one of the biggest learning curves. You do have to apply for VA health care. Mm -hmm. Some people's like, well, can I make too much? You could possibly make too much money. Mm -hmm. But if you are a service-connected veteran or a combat veteran, you get free, you get free health care. You, yeah. you, you're enrolled in a, you know categories. I had a veteran that said to me, I'm in category five. What does that mean? I have a copay. I was able to got my transition patient advocate. She was on it in two minutes, sent me the information. I was able to send him an email about how much his co-pays is going to be. So he'll know what that looks like for him and why, it, you, you know, he's making an astronomical amount of money. So he does have a little copay, no service connection, no combat time. But we look at all of that and take that into consideration as they come in. So any questions that they may have, do I get free health care? Why do I have to pay a copay? You know, mm -hmm. do am I a combat veteran? All of that. We look at their paperwork. If they don't know where to get it, we we help them find it. We you know, and it that's, that's really cool because I look at that and there's all these questions. Like, I know a lot of these answers because I've been doing this a long time. But I'm thinking about like other people that I've served with that like, well, I was in combat, but I don't have it on my DD-214 because I was TDY for X amount of time and I was traveling and, you know, like I was in the combat zone and this happened, but I was like, oh, well, how do you prove that? How do you get mm -hmm. that next step? And that's something that y'all would be able to help with. We would be able to direct them on who could assist them and where they might. I mean, I have seen people who were like, I don't know where to get started. Mm -hmm. We're like, just give us an opportunity when we're out doing outreach. I think, you know, you said a great story. One in particular is when we're in outreach and we can get the veteran enrolled that day mm -hmm. and just start the ball rolling. The team is there. We can connect them to primary care, put in for the primary care appointment. Sometimes before I can get off the phone with the veteran, I'm putting in for a primary care appointment. They're calling them. And I'm like, you missed it already because I can see the note go in and say, <laughs> we called you. So I'm like, I don't put push in until I hang up. I say, well, when I hang up, they're going to call you. Make sure you answer this phone. So, and I look at, I'm like, I'm looking at your chart to see if you missed the call. I'm mm -hmm. calling them back. Hey, hey, they've been calling you. Make sure you answer it. Oh, that's Just funny. trying to get them connected to whether it's their mental health appointment or whatever, because we, we hear it and we know how bad they need the services. So. We've been talking with Dr. Amika Riggins, is the program manager for the post-9-11 military to VA program at the Hampton VA. They have these programs at all the VA centers. So if you're in Richmond or out in California, wherever you happen to be listening, go check it out. If you're a, a recent veteran or a maybe not so recent veteran, but need some help and you're a 9 -11, post-9-11 veteran, which it goes all the way back to 1998, which makes perfect sense. You know, the folks that were serving prior to 9-11, that that's a pretty good window of folks because that's like 25 years now. So yeah, that's a pretty good span of time. So you are eligible for a lot of help and a lot of services. Things have changed. You might have been told no, you're not eligible before years ago. Things have changed. The PAC Act, we've talked about it. There's a lot of things that have changed with the VA. So even if you've done these things and you say they couldn't help me before, they can probably help you now. And there is no charge for asking. 
Dr. Riggins, thank you so much for joining us on Coming Home Well. And I leave you with the last word. Is there anything else you'd like to leave us with? I appreciate this opportunity. One of the things that we always like to say is the way that people would choose to serve in the military is how they see others that have served are being treated. We hope that everyone knows that Hampton is welcoming all veterans, service members that are transitioning, and that we're here to help. Thank you so much for joining us on Coming Home Well. Thanks for joining us this week on Coming Home Well with Dr. Tyler Pieron. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, post about it on social media, or leave a rating and a review. Thanks again. And until all are home and all are well, this is Coming Home Well.